Hey, good people. Guru Mayor here. Good to see you. I just wanted to let everybody know about my 10 month course. It's called Senses of the Soul. Once a year, I work with a small group of people uh, live and with some videos to dive deep into self healing, uh, working through all the heavy emotions and finding their gifts and how to work with them to feel better. So, if you're ready for a deeply transformational experience uh, and get those bothersome emotions handled, not disappeared, but just, um, yeah, build some emotional healing and maturity. Um, check me out at sensesofthesoul.com and you can see all about the uh, 10-month program I call Senses of the Soul. So that goes along with our theme here. This series is about lessons in self-therapy. Yeah, self-therapy. So last week we talked about what it is and what it isn't. It is the mirac miraculous ability we have to know what's bothering us, whether it's historical trauma or current issues. Uh, we've got, it's not even a mystical sixth sense. It's the senses of the soul. It's the emotions that let us know, hey, I'm angry about that. You know, that hurts. Or I'm scared about that. That seems like a threat to me. Or um, I'm sad about that because it was very important to me. So you may know that depression, like anxiety, emotions are through the roof these days. So don't blow your top. There is a thing called self-therapy that we can do a lot to help it, right? So what I wanted to talk about today, and then we're going to do an 11-minute practice, is I often talk to people who just are under a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, very emotional, very unhappy, suffering. And they want either to meditate or to get some therapy or something to uh, feel better, you know, whatever works, right? And I, as a life coach, take a first look at, and I want you to think about this. If you're overwhelmed and you want to feel better, well, it's hard to do that if you're in a tornado, right? You know, how are you going to be calm if you're living inside a, a, a tornado? And so I want you to think about, review your life. What things are most stressful? People, places, uh, environments, uh, relationships, work that is just very stressful, very pressurized, very unsupportive, very unhealthy. Because if it's been that way for a long time, especially if you grew up in a rather chaotic environment as a kid, or if you've come to learn to get used to it, uh, you know, we live like that in a lot of pressure and stress. And thinking that's sort of just the way it is or going to be. So my point is that to start healing on a deeper level, uh, we need a little space. We need a little calmness. Uh, you know, we're working in my course on triggers and trauma on how to learn to identify what triggers you and upsets you and not live with it. Not live with it. But if you're under a high allostatic load of, of, of stress, you know, then you're just sort of always on the edge of just being tipped over. So I'm making a plea today to, to identify things in your life that are uh, particularly pressurized, stressful, uh, unsatisfactory, and take a fresh look at them and go like, you know, I don't want to live that way. And make a plan. I did this, and uh, when I first did this years ago, I had some things that took me literally two, three, five years to clear up. Okay, so it's not overnight, but that was five years ago now, and now it's all that, that is clear. And maybe there's some more things I'm working on, but um, so please, I want you to, we're going to meditate here in a minute, and I want you to think about 
when we meditate, and I'll give you some cues, look around at the stressors. You know, what just makes you anxious, uptight? And take a fresh look. Is that necessary to be that way? Does it have to be that way? Even if your mom and dad were like that and you've always been like that, mm, if you know somebody else that isn't like that, that means that's humanly possible and that your history led you here, but the next chapter of your history could lead you into greater peace. So that's my intro um, to declutter your life. In coaching, we call it tolerations. You know, what are you tolerating that you've learned to tolerate, but uh, it's intolerable and it's stressful and it's going to be hard to do to really get peaceful or happy or do the deeper cleansing of self therapy and self healing when there's more being piled in day to day. You know, how are you going to empty your trauma load if there's more piling in? All right. So that's my six minute, five minute intro. Now we're going to do a very simple practice today. Please, please join me. Uh, very easy, very simple, and probably very familiar to, to you. It's simple left nostril breathing. Okay? So I want to start, we're going to count them. I'm going to count them with you. So with your, just sit up comfortably, right thumb against the right nostril, and I like to have my fingers just resting on my forehead. And I'm going to count slowly. Let's inhale and exhale together. We're going to do 26 of these and just see if that's sort of a quick declutter for you. Ready? Okay. So begin your inhale. Let's go about four seconds. One, two, three, four. Exhale through the left nostril. Four. Inhale. Two, three, four. Exhale. Inhale and exhale and inhale two, three, four and exhale two, three, four. Keep going. Slow breathing. You're going to feel so good in just a few minutes here. And you can slow it down if this is, but this is a kind of a nice pace. Inhale, exhale. I've got a gently ticking clock that gives me four seconds. I like it. Already halfway. It's just a few minutes here. Now the idea with counting is to just keep it kind of even, but would rather you don't have to count. Once you feel a nice groove, a nice slow groove, just keep going. And really focus on just how pleasant it is, how calm you're becoming. Discharging heat, pressure, thoughts. Yeah, let's slow it down. Feel that cool air up through the left nostril, stimulating your brain in a calming way. Left nostril breathing, four seconds in, four seconds out, very calmly. And we just got a few more here, and then we're going to change it up a little bit. Okay, last one. You can inhaling and exhaling very calmly.
Now we're going to switch it up. So join me. Exhale now together and slowly inhale. One, two, three, four. Now hold it. Just be peacefully sitting there with your breath in. Now begin your exhale slowly. One, two, three, four, and leave the breath out now. Leave it out. Now the instruction is hold the breath in and out to your capacity. So I won't cue you now. I'll just let you decide what is your capacity, which is going to challenge you a little bit, but not freak you out. Something like that. Okay, so left nostril only. Slow on the inhale, but then just pause. No tight locks or anything, just a little diaphragm at a tension. And you've got these two windows of stillness with the inhaled breath and the outhaled breath. And then you've got this really nice, soothing breath in between. Now this full practice, this section is recommended 31 minutes a day for 90 days. I mean, if you need some serious detoxing from stress, et cetera, uh, detoxing from bad habits, from being in a rush, from being late, from being worried, um, this is a, a game changer and a habit changer. Might take a little more than just one session today, but let's give it a good, 11 minutes, right? So it's only left nostril, suspending the breath on the in and the out for as long as you deem correct. You can make it very stimulating by holding long and letting Fear rise up and holding your calm in the face of that fear. That's if you've been down and maybe want some stimulation. If you, but this is mostly a calming practice. So if you have been a little rushed and exhausted, use it to calm. So don't, don't push the retention of the breath too long. Keep it just still, still and peaceful. You with me, you practicing, keep going. Hang in there a few more minutes and you're gonna feel this spaciousness. Maybe you got it going now, spacious peacefulness. That is the interior analogy an interior experience of what I'm inviting you is to declutter, de-suffer your life. So now would be a good time. You're feeling a backdrop of peacefulness, a little calm. So look out at your life, your daily life these days. What is in opposition to that. What's in opposition to your peacefulness, to your being able to relax, being able to have time to restore and enjoy. And you may see things, some things aren't changeable, maybe, but don't assume that. Assume that, oh, I can't change that person, but you can change your relationship or not have the relationship, something there's always a choice. There's always something you can do to move towards peace and away from stress. This is practical self-healing, self-therapy of decluttering your home, your schedule, your 
relationship troubles. Hang in with me now for a few more minutes. Let's keep it going. Left nostril. Here's the thing to do if you're seeing some things in your life that are cluttering your life, stressing you. Inhale and see it. Feel it. Exhale, release it. Like imagine that thing being nicer, more supportive, more pleasant, more relaxed, more conscious. And then hold the breath out and keep it out, keep it out. Let's come up on the last minute. This will be 11 minutes from the start of the 26 breaths. Go this last minute. And see through, break through. See through the clutter, the suffering, to the light, to the place where, to the, imagine how life could be. And it takes practical steps. You know, you can't just wish for a clean closet. You gotta identify it, commit some time, make a plan, go for it, do it. And again, if you've got something that's really stressing you, get creative and spend a year. It takes a year to do the big projects sometimes. Okay. Okay, you got this last one. So this time, when you exhale, just relax completely and sit still, eyes closed. Enjoy it. Peace space, maybe even bliss. And you did it. If you kind of quit a little bit, just 90 days, three months, okay? The full practice, 31 minutes a day, for 90 days. I mean, the full dosage, right? The full dosage for the full effect. Left nostril, slow in, hold it, slow out, hold it. How you feel? I wanted to give you an internal process, very much parallel to the external process. Again, the idea is self-healing is a deeply internal process, but don't endeavor to heal when you're still being wounded, when there's still tons of stress pouring in. So start very practically, identify, I invite you to identify one or two or three of your major sources of discomfort, stress, pressure, and 
immediately you say, it can't be done, I don't know how to do it. Just put them on paper, start thinking about it, talk to some people, make a plan. Like I say, it can take a long time, but it's not impossible. And then later in this series, we'll talk about yeah, internal controls you can have. So you can't always control the external world, but when you don't take control of the things that you can, because you, it's always been that way, your mama said, or it's, you know, um, that's unnecessary suffering. So that's the idea today. Uh, I hope you take away something useful and can chip away at the stressors. Okay? So thanks for your efforts and attention. They can really pay off. And... I'd like to invite you to go to sensesofthesoul.com where there's a pop-up and you can read all about my 10-month course starting in May. 10 months, I'll work with you, I'll talk to you and a small group of people working together every week. We'll work through the, the seven heavy emotions and learn how, what their real virtues are, what their real purpose is and how to, how to work with them. It's, it's deeply healing, deeply powerful. So check it out and uh, talk to me about it. And thank you.